Uh, Lynn Murphy, who will also be speaking, uh, is an American linguist teaching at the University of Sussex in England, and she'll be uh, talking about uh, her book, The Prodigal Tongue, about the sibling rivalry between British and American English, each with their own dictionary culture. Um, and you can see that we have both books uh, here. Um, after we're all done, uh, there will be time, if you would like, to uh, buy a book. You can probably convince the, uh, the authors to uh, sign it for you as well. We have a representative from the Columbia University Bookstore who uh, has supplied the books for sale. And just to show how everything is sort of lining up, both books are $15. <laughs> uh, so buy two, buy many for your for your uh, friends and family. Uh, they're both wonderful books. Um, I, I put a blurb on Lynn Murphy's uh, book uh, on the back cover. Thank you so much. And uh, Pachez Burroughs will be our first speaker. Um, and as I mentioned, um, his book, Dictionary Stories, takes example sentences from dictionaries and repurposes them in a very creative way. Hearing about uh, Jez's project uh, for quite a while from some mutual friends. He was able to uh, attend uh, Metrolex uh, a year ago or so. And um, it was just you know, wonderful that this book is now published and, and Jez can tell some more about this big project. So, Jez, thank you. Um, which is pretty heavy stuff for a 
dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surrounded by everything else in the dictionary, which is very neutral and very instructive, I loved that there was this very evocative, melodramatic sentence. Um, and I also liked it had a specific quality, it had a very, it had a point of view, it had a, uh, um, a very specific narrative heft to it, as if you had just plucked it out of another piece of fiction. And I imagine lexicographers in the room would probably nodding sagely and saying, well, that's probably what it was. Um, but please keep in mind at this point, my lexicographic knowledge at this point in the project was nil. Uh, it was probably less than nil, if that was possible. <coughs> I never heard and certainly never used the word corpus, so just bear with my, <laughs> bear with my naivety at this point. Um, so there I was with this sentence, and um, gripped by, well, um, procrastination mostly, um, I also realized that this sentence was kind of interesting, and they actually seem to have a kind of kinship, it seemed like maybe they had come from the same place. <laughs> <laughs> he perched on the edge of the bed, a study in confusion and misery, comma, a study of a man devoured by awareness and his own <laughs> something like a, a small thunderbolt at this point, um, because if, if I was holding, digitally speaking, this book of thousands and thousands of example sentences, maybe I could just keep on finding other sentences in the book and adding to this miserable little scene that I would accidentally be building. So, the end of the bed, study of confusion and misery, etc., 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 etc. He looked around the bleak little room in despair, the room was dreadfully untidy. And at this point, I was gripped by the kind of nervous anxiety when I know that I need to spend the next six to eight months of my life doing a thing. Um, <laughs> if only it was six to eight months, it was a lot longer, but it was, uh, it was wonderful. Um, so, here is, here is what happened after this. Uh, I made this. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a whirlwind uh, tour of the things that happened this. I made this. It's a little book of uh, the first 12 stories that I made. And I made it for this event in the Bay Area called Essay Zine Fest, which is where a load of very well-meaning uh, nerds sit behind tables full of art that they have made, and then they look up at you like expectant puppies, hoping that you'll buy something. And I was one of those nerds, and I had a table full of stuff, and one of the things that I had was a copy of the fiction story. And it was a really nice weekend, and I'd probably say two-thirds of the people who came up to my table were buying that specifically or had seen it. Uh, which is strange, um, uh, but not entirely confusing, because I also made this, which is a very, very rudimentary Tumblr that had some of these early stories on it. And what happened to this uh, was, well, the internet happened to this, um, and the internet did what the internet's alternative does, which is completely profound any expectation of what you think might be popular or viral. Um, and it descended on, on that website with a lot of very wordy headlines. Um, copy copy, which is kept nice and uh, brief. Um, so this happened, and it was very much a blur. Um, and I was at my day job, and I was sneaking off to the conference room to talk to journalists at the Washington Post. And, um, again, well meaning, but obviously thoroughly abused Canadian radio hosts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few things uh, also happened after this um, that were also kind of a blur. Um, a friend introduced me to a literary agent. That agent um, I worked with to make a proposal. That proposal ended up at Art of Rail, where a bunch of very wonderful, talented people um, uh, I worked with them to turn it into a, a real book. Um, it's a fantastic little desk. <laughs> um, so, as I said, I'm going to talk about the how, and hopefully that will explain the why. Um, and there were, uh, I would say, two or three, in the case of this, uh, three ways that I managed to make this process plausible. Um, because we're now at, I think, the end of November? Uh, no, the beginning of November, 2016. Which was good timing, because I just left my full-time job, which was wonderful. Uh, it was bad timing, because it was the presidential election, which was a lot of So, uh, this is how I began. I had a copy of the new, uh, new Oxford American Dictionary, a paper copy, which I um, and uh, on my screen I had an empty text edit file um, that I was filling completely at random with any interesting sentences that I found. Um, no structure, no logic to this, um, and um, 
as you can imagine, this was interminable. Um, so I quickly moved on from that to <laughs> this program, uh, Scrivener, uh, which is used by more reputable writers than me, novelists, screenwriters, and so on. Um, but you can see on the right the beginnings of what I'm um, going to talk about first, which is categories. Um, so faced with the entirety of the New Oxford American Dictionary, I needed to find a way to sort of chunk things into manageable groups. And that first chunk was kind of thematic categories. So, time, for example, and a bunch of uh, examples about time. One, three, obviously, would be just a few examples of examples. Um, So these original categories were very broadly thematic, um, and that that was a, that was a help. Um, but after that, I started grouping them by um, <coughs> linguistic structure. And again, very much not a linguist. Please remember, <laughs> please go easy. Um, but for example, I, I found a bunch of uh, examples that were. Um, oh, by the way, this is a a, a smattering of the kind of. Uh, as well as I had after a few months of working with the Oxford American Library. So, after, after thematic categories, I went to linguistic, uh, linguistically interesting sentences. So these are all two, uh, two word sentences in the form of thrusting entrepreneurs is one of the more subtly uncomfortable I found. Um, examples of the form of their question. There are hundreds of these, and they are fantastic. Um, and, and really, there was a giant list, and I'm just sending them to a bit of a, a, a theory. Um, example sentences that begin with a certain word, so they begin with don't, or maybe they begin with a particular pronoun, um, which was super useful when I started doing these like stories that had to have consistent characters doing things, um, as they often do in stories. Uh, and then, more sort of strangely structured ones, I found almost a dozen sentences that were in the structure X is the Y is Z. Uh, so, I should say, uh, it is probably really to be today because I'm going to mess up my American language English. Uh, almost possibly. Um, so, yeah, interestingly structured sentences, and then also, I guess the third category of these would be uh, useful, narratively useful pieces. So, sentences that might make Making in the beginning of the story. Um, regrettably, I don't think I used first to dig a large hole in the ground. There's still time. Um, also, uh, endings, obviously, the basis. Um, again, any of these would be perfectly serviceable for endings as well, but uh, they are yet to be written. Um, so, I could, I could talk about categories for the rest of this talk, but we have limited time and we undoubtedly have limited patience with me. Um, so, um, I'm going to move on to the second thing that made this process plausible, which was multiple dictionaries. I obviously mentioned New Oxford American Dictionary a lot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to explore what my options were. I was also kind of curious if you could, for example, tell the difference between a story written in just with no sentences versus um, you know, since this is from the query, for example. Um, and I, I honestly had no idea of what the answer to that would be. Um, so these, this is the roster of, of dictionaries that I used, um, and they go in order from uh, the point that I started using them over the course of, uh, I think it was about eight months uh, into it. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to talk about all of these, but I am going to sort of pull out a few excerpts of stories that kind of Display why I thought these, where I thought the characteristics of these dictionaries really came through, uh, at least in terms of their examples. So, the Oxford American, there we go, said it a lot. I, um, uh, I found an interesting thing in, in uh, amongst these sentences. I found a lot of uh, ones that were either two words or even one word wrong. Um, I can't sentence, just an example, but um, those one word uh, examples were also. Suffixes and prefixes. Uh, and that was kind of an interesting logic puzzle because the idea was how do I fit this into a format? Not, I was writing a lot of prose, which was hard to fit a two word sentence into. Um, and it struck me one day that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I live in San Francisco and you can walk out in front 
who are uh, a very pretentious cocktail bars. But I figured that writing a menu using these examples would actually be the best usage of them. Um, so, um, and of whiskey, balsamic resins, burnt orange, um, uh, uh, an increasingly unhinged cocktail menu I should mention that. Um, <laughs> I also am just completely delighted by the fact that the example for crappy is crappy wine. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, this is from the piece of the graph of The, the bracketed theme done there by the, book, uh, by the way is the entire book is organized alphabetically by the theme, which is kind of a cute to that one, um, but it was uh, enjoyable to uh, structure. Um, so that's, that's the nuance of the graph. I mentioned the query before, uh, which was a dictionary that I had never come across uh, at all. Uh, um, but it's, it's kind of lovely. Uh, I actually, I don't know whether it was just the, my receptiveness to it, but um, I found the query had a, had a, a ton of really very lyrical, kind of poetic sentences about nature. Um, yeah, it, it could just be me, or it might have been something that is inherent in the dictionary. But, um, so uh, this was. This is an excerpt from another story that was written entirely with the query sentences, um, which I kind of think is the, the most pure version of that dictionary in terms of this book. Um, other stories in the book I wrote with the foundation of dictionaries and, and with just a little bit of money. Um, but this is, this is a query story, true, true. Um, yeah, I got an afternoon of throws of my unspeakable passion. I walked into the bush with a little weight from my mind. Um, the cut there, by the way, is. Uh, one afternoon, the first of my own spoken passion is an example of throw, and then I will fire to the bush to remove away from my mind. And again, it doesn't require any kind of connected <coughs> tissue to put them together, but they, they just kind of, it's just sort of gone on, but um, um, it sounded kind of nice to me. Uh, it's a little humble seaweed. Um, and actually, I should mention, having struggled to try and find a place for a two word example to go, I actually managed to use uh, bark shingles. Um, which was something that I thought I would never have used in the story, but I found it. Um, let's see. Uh, so, a couple of slang dictionaries. Um, let's see, I don't think I used, I think I probably got the most usage out of the dictionary for American slang. So, tricky, and, and given the nature of slang, and uh, my understanding of it, you know, it will often find yourself to even with content that is, uh, let's say, dated. Uh, uh, or just outright people in places, but um, uh, so yeah, dictionary of American slang, uh, and this is a good one. Uh, to talk about. Um, so using yeah. entirely sentences from the dictionary of American slang, I wrote a story called Diane Smoked Jive, which <laughs> I so I wrote this as a uh, it's a story about two um, women in kind of like fifties Hollywood. Um, Writer and starlet fall in love, they fall out of love, and I was really fascinated <coughs> where these sentences came specifically. And I realized that you know, whoever was um, sourcing these examples, if you search for these exact terms in Google, you could actually find them pretty easily. So if you were to x ray this story, <laughs> so, uh, this sentence is actually from 1972, it's from a New York Times article about uh, a Harvard. Uh, national this sentence is uh, from a kind of what I understand to be a fairly like hard boiled um, police uh, procedural called the Second Deadly Sin. And yes, that is the sequel to the first Deadly Sin. <laughs> 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 and the three words, yes, it is the prequel to the third Deadly Sin. Um, and this one is okay. This entire sentence is from a 1982 edition of Playboy, uh, an, inter an interview with Tom Patty. So, I can kind of imagine that my, my brain at this point was exploding with the idea that I was creating these stories that might have had the most um, curious genesis of anything. But, um, yeah, the American Science Dictionary was the only one where I was able to most concretely find some of the sources. Um, anyway, uh, American Heritage Dictionary of Idioms. Um, so, writing stories entirely with um, examples from the Atlantic Dictionary. Writing them is hard and reading them is difficult. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's like eating too much chocolate cake. It's really rich. It doesn't really have any, there's no sort of lightness in it. Um, so I generally dipped into this dictionary, but I just needed some sort of 
um, casual or like colloquial secret sauce on top of an existing story. Uh, so um, this one, uh, the, the great essence is I think it's actually from Collins, the Kogel of the Chronicles, etc. The others are all from um, that American heritage dictionary that you can see. The first place with death during the avalanche. Um, uh, I, I imagine I probably don't need to introduce this dictionary at all, um, but um, this is a good opportunity actually to talk about um, constraints. So there's the macro constraint of the book. Everything is except for sentences. There's also micro constraints that were dotted in a moment. Um, and one of them was um, is anyone familiar with the ruler poem? Um, yes. Uh, the ruler poem is very briefly um, it is a collection of um, scientists and mathematicians and writers, and they're mostly uh, some uh, older French men generally. Um, and they write fiction, but they write it with algorithms and charts and games, and um, they, they have invented the kind of constraints. And I'm not sure if they invented it, but they maybe popularized it. There's uh, one called an ABC degree, um, and this is my version of an ABC degree, which is, again, excerpt of here, but uh, each line came from a method section of the American Heritage in order. Um, and these are, these are satisfying to write, but take a long time, because you kind of have to begin with the trick of these letters. You sort of have to begin with X and then work out. Because if you get to X, you find you have kind of slim opinions about how the kind of examples that you can use. Um, so this beginning of that one that actually kind of finds me kind of nicely. Like, found an English garden all around you, huge trees and blossoms and cut grass. Um, another one, another dictionary I can look at to ask me to introduce. And another opportunity to talk about another constraint. Um, this story, actually, this is probably one of my favorites just because it, it, I think it also speaks to that kind of purity. It, it's one dictionary, it's only Marian, and it has a minimum of um, my, my content in it, which I'll get not too sure. Um, uh, just as an outsider, just sort of um, having no idea really about the most of practice beyond reading Corey Stanford's book. Um, uh, I, I, I liked Marion's examples because they seem very um, buttoned down, very no nonsense, and, and off, off of the shore. And so, writing this, um, I don't know, I read this sometimes, but it kind of seems like a, it's almost like if anyone's ever heard Karak to read any of the poetry, then it has this kind of stop start quality that I think I was really channeling that. Um, but the constraint is that if you probably already know this, is that all of them come from the A section of the very most of them. Okay, so that's the dictionary. The, la the last thing that um, how this was achieved was um, rules, which does not sound particularly exciting. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was to me at this point. Uh, uh, one main reason. Those earlier stories that I wrote in that little yellow scene, I was not adding anything to them. Purely exact sentences, and consequently they read like if you have fed the entire lesson anyway into a particularly terrible AI, <laughs> right anyway, they sound like that short declarative, like unconnected sentences. The, the butter was cold, we went outside, mother was there. Like, it just. <laughs> <laughs> it was and just not, not fun to read. So I, I, I started wondering like, what can I add to these? What can I add to these stories while still staying faithful to my constraint um, to make the reading experience less arduous? Um, and so I came up with a list of rules. And they are, I'm serious about this, they're, they're explicit, they're in the book, they're in the introduction. Um, this is very small, um, but uh, the best way to describe these rules and to see them in action is to um, see them in the context of the story. So here's a story. All right, you cannot read it, it's super cool. But um, it's a story called Going to Istanbul. This is a good kind of test of the rules. Um, so uh, that x ray that we did earlier is kind of useful, so we'll do that again. Uh, and this is, this is the guts of this story, essentially. Um, uh, so you have the, the underlines there, which if you haven't noticed, those are just there to indicate the head word that each sentence is an example of. Um, uh, the color is up next. So uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Or five different dictionaries. These are all from the West American. 
these are all from American Heritage. These are from the NCC language, uh, area of British slang. And these are very close to them. And these uh, are the dictionary of me. Uh, this, is, this is my, this is what I added into this, um, which kind of was like a nice galaxy of translation. Um, so this speaks to the first rule, um, and I read from the rules. Uh, a dictionary story is defined as any short piece of writing composed of example sentences taken from one or more dictionaries. Uh, for flow and readability, the following small edits to example sentences are allowed. And these are the things that I would allow myself, and you can see almost all of them in, in this story. So, uh, punctuation, check, lots of it. Um, periods, uh, uh, comma, it may have got adventurous and threw an end dash in there at some point. Um, just to connect it a little bit, I'm going to some connected tissues so that it sounds like a soft start for a lot anyway. Um, formatting, I can add or remove, folding, outsizing, I'm not going to add it, I'll remove it. Um, and a big one, uh, conjunctions, prepositions, and adverbs. I can add these between discrete sentences, uh, but not in the middle of an example sentence. They have to remain intact, as it were. So, uh, so the Aurora Metropolis filled the whole of the southern horizon uh, like an unattended fire. And create a list of simile to be true. And let's see, uh, contractions, I'm just going to myself that. And um, two alterations uh, that seem useful but could be useful. Um, I allow myself to change pronouns and tense. And a lot of that may seem very generous, and you might suddenly be thinking, like, that's, uh, that's a lot of uh, rope here in this up there, if you're <laughs> claiming that all these stories are written in the sentences. But I had two sort of um, checkpoints to make sure I stayed uh, faithful. So the one was that uh, the sum of all the edits had to be less than 5%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arbitrarily chosen, but it just seemed like a, like a nice amount. So, um, I believe the story is in characters somewhere in the region of about 1100, and the edits constitute about 44 characters, I think. Um, and that's 3.7%. So, <laughs> <laughs> did it. <laughs> uh, and then finally, the other one, uh, and uh, this is perhaps more uh, useful, is that all edits of any sentence that I made had to read the sentence as a functioning example of that word. So, for example, and this is probably, I imagine, getting into some of the places where I weeds, and please tell me if I'm using some terms. But, for example, um, he jumped up, just kind of stuck this little, little teal S in there to make a she, because the character I was dealing with was a she. Um, but it, it, it still functions as a example, so I'm jumping up. Mm -hmm. um, and tense also to a very similar thing, or um, uh, I'll show the truth. But yeah, so those are the rules, and, and I wanted to put them in the book because I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to make sure that I was accountable for these things. Um, and actually, looking looking at the stories in this X-ray format is kind of nice, actually. Uh, at least this is how I edited the instrument that they were color coded, and so. You
is that there's, there's novels and so forth that take the form of a dictionary, like the Dictionary right. of Hazards and, and uh, the Devil's Dictionary mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, have, did, did you like read any of those beforehand or while you were writing this or since? Uh, uh, yes, there were, there were a few. So uh, the Love's Dictionary is the one, um, the Devil's Dictionary is the uh, um, There's a few just kind of, as I said, like dictionary adjacent to books. Uh, like I mentioned, for example, I had an entire chapter on example sentences, which was so perfect. Um, uh, yeah, it was a it was a long list. I should really make some really nice comments. Yeah, if you if you could tweet that. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, one one book that actually was really instructive. I mentioned the Green Poem. It's a book by I believe he's now the last remaining American member of the Green Poem, um, Daniel Levin Becker. And he wrote this fantastic book that's kind of a history of the book, but it's also kind of a memoir about him enjoying it. Um, and I, that book is fantastic. I think I found something in the page that I had been thinking. This is kind of a fire in these things that I read a little bit, which is very interesting. So, yeah, I'd recommend it to you. Do you have any uh, procedure or something or that you use when you want or the principles you follow? In connected sentences, so it was flow, you know, a narrative flow, a here flow, or was it just sort of trial and error and looking at lots of this? It was a it was a lot of trial and error. Um, just it kind of felt just sent it was an actual college. That's probably actually another way that felt kind of visual. I, I think I could tell inherently when you put two sentences together, they just didn't seem to match up. The, the, the connection was too obvious. Um, and so yes, yeah, there would be it's like, hey, that was an example there, so I'm using, uh, like, you kind of join two things to put it to the elaborate similes. That was often my favorite way of, of um, joining these together. Um, yeah, I, I would actually, at some point, I don't know if I can do this on my own speed or uh, release some version of it, but those x ray versions um, are really fascinating to me to see if 
construction. Everything's kind of flattened. So yeah, I think that would, that would reveal a lot of the techniques which I know. Uh, hi, uh, just broadly speaking, I don't want to incur the right of anyone. But, uh, just, um, broadly speaking, there are good example sentences in the sense that they tell you what they mean, they tell you what the word means, and bad example sentences where the word just sort of sticks out, and if I sort of knew what it meant, I would not like it. Like, that would be the rating sentence, the yeah. Yeah, which doesn't tell you what it doesn't really tell you what it means. It's just sort of there. And that, that, that's the rating sentence. No one, there, isn't, like, there isn't another one. Um, and my, my observation is that, in a sense, the bad sentences were good for you because in a sense you had a lot of narrative play for something like that. Like maybe there's a story there. Did you have a sense that like shorter sentences or sentences that sort of cut short the definition in some way were gems for you or, or better or the type of sentences that were good for you in that sense and you just broadly cut it in some way? Definitely. I, I, I think you're totally right. Volume of query for the word varnish, which I think was, uh, uh, it was an authorial quotation, so it was attributed to someone, but the full quote was Do not admonish the status louse. The <laughs> tear in the heart out of a backyard sparrow. Which is insane. But um, the moment I found that, I'm like, oh, that's a story. Great, I'm done. <laughs> That's a story about someone that's literally turned into a story of someone who is leaving instructions for a babysitter. The other one that I also really like, where you can help, which goes with the thing was New York Times, which was mostly just, it just had me concerned about what I spoke about behind it. So there was an example for uh, gallon, a unit of measurement, and it was gallons of fake. <laughs> Water, blood, blood is somehow less creepy than fake blood. Um, but yes, I think, yeah, the Rose question is, is that one there? Absolutely. Okay. I have two questions. Uh, the first is more technical. I was really interested in how you categorize things because I'm sure some there's overlap. So did you kind of put them all into, like, so for example, um, the sentence starting with she. I mean, there's obviously most likely an action verb there in two. So would you put them in both categories, or would you just kind of take the one that most appealed to you? Um, yeah, that's, that was a concern. It wasn't, I didn't actually found, find a way to put them in multiple categories, but I've held it up. Um, these, these lists were enormous. Mm -hmm. um, I had one per dictionary with 100 plus categories that I'd never seen before. Um, so yeah, I, just, I put it in the place that I thought it would be most useful to me to write that. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and my second question was um, about how you decided that a story was going to end, or like was a finished product, I guess. And that kind of ties into my, I'm just curious about your process of writing, whether you started the, and I'm sure you probably had a lot of different processes for every story, whether you started the, at the end or kind of took one sentence after the next and just found your way through. Yeah, that, that had to be quite um, flexible, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Lady of Country kind of probably speaks to that about this, that sense of this because she had a sort of 10,000 foot view of this. But there was the ending that I thought was appropriate when I was writing the story, and there was the ending that was appropriate when it was sequenced kind of in the rest of the book. So something that was particularly comic or something that was particularly more than would be super jarring if it ran out against something else that was really So um, it kind of figured out an ending individually, and then it had to revisit that for the purpose. Taking a, a final one. I feel like I just. Let's add one more question. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering do you think this experience has made you a better writer? Um, yeah, I think I do, actually. I, often people will ask, the first question when people ask is do you think your vocabulary is going to be better? No. But in terms of just like the bulk amount of reading that I was doing, 